All right, here we are again with Uncle Ben's Bedtime Stories. Remember, these stories were written in 1964. So this is kind of like going back in time where people talk differently, things happen differently. There were no electronics for the most part. Definitely no cell phones or recording devices. So here we go. Story number two. I am here, sir. That's the name of the book. I am here, sir. Sounds military, right? All right, here we go. Maurice! That's his name. That's the boy's name. Maurice! Cried Daddy. He calls him Daddy. Maurice! Cried Daddy. Come here. I want you to help me. There was no reply. Daddy went on with his work. A big load of firewood, firewood ordered for next winter had been dropped on the sidewalk and he was hurrying to get it all in the woodshed before nightfall. After a while, he called again, but more insistently, Maurice, where are you? Still no reply. Daddy wondered whether he should leave the pile of wood and go and search for his son or continue with the job by himself. He decided to go on working. In a little while, however, he began thinking about Maurice. Why shouldn't the boy come and help, he asked himself. Probably, he was indoors in a comfortable armchair, reading. He called again. Maurice, I'm waiting for you. Yeah? Drawled a sleepy voice from somewhere in the house. Did you call me? Yes, I did call you, said Daddy. Come and help carry this wood into the shed. There was a long pause. Are you coming, Maurice? Asked Daddy. Or shall I have to come in and get you? Ah, uh, I suppose I'll have to come, said the sleepy voice. And in a few minutes, Maurice, hands in pockets, came out the front door. What did you want me to do? He asked. Surely you can see for yourself, said Daddy. We must move this wood off the sidewalk before nightfall. Come now, hurry up. Maurice looked at the big pile, then began to lift the logs into the wheelbarrow for Daddy to wheel to the shed. He could work all right once he got going, but he badly needed a self-starter. When the job was finished and the last log had been carried in, Daddy turned to Maurice. Thanks, son, he said. You're a great help. I'd like to have you working with me. If only you would come the first time you were called. You'd be perfect. I wonder whether you could improve along that line. Ah, uh, it's always hard to get started, said Maurice, especially when I'm interested in something else. Let me tell you a story, said Daddy. Maurice was all ears at once. He loved stories. Do you remember hearing or reading of a man called Shackleton? Sir Ernest Shackleton? You mean the explorer who went to the South Pole? Yes. Well, once, when he was planning an expedition to the Antarctic, he decided he must take someone called Wild with him, a man who had been a most faithful and devout helper on former trips. But Wild was nowhere to be found. It was said that he had gone big game hunting in the heart of Africa, and there was no way to reach him. You'd better give up trying to locate him, said a friend. If he's in Africa, you'll never find him. What's more, if he's big game hunting, he won't want to go to the Antarctic again anyway. But I must have Wild along with me, said Shackleton. Better sail without him, said the friend. You can't find him, and even if you could, he wouldn't go. If Wild knows I'm going on this trip, he will come, said Shackleton. I'm sure he will, whether he is in Africa or anywhere else. Don't fool yourself, said his friend. Just then there was a knock at the door. It was a messenger boy with a card in his hand. There's a gentleman downstairs to see you, sir, 
he said. Shall I bring him up? Shackleton looked at the card. He read, Frank Wilde. It's Wilde. He's here, he cried. Bring him in. Beaming with smiles, the old friends met and shook hands. But how? Why? began Shackleton. I thought you were hunting big game in Africa. I was, sir, said Wilde. But I heard you were going on this expedition, so I dropped everything and came at once. Then, standing stiffly at attention and saluting, he said, I'm here, sir. Captain, what are your orders? Now, Maurice, don't you think that Wilde did a splendid thing? He didn't wait to be called. He just felt that he was needed and came along. He dropped everything he was doing and hurried to what he felt was his post of duty. That was grand of him, said Maurice. I wish, began Daddy. I know, said Maurice. He knew all right. Next time Daddy called him to help on a job, a cheerful voice replied immediately. I'm here, sir. Captain, what are your orders? Oh, wow, 1964. The United States was at war and it was very military and coming out of the Korean War, going into Vietnam. So a bedtime story became military where a son reports to his father um, as he is called to do. <laughs> Funny book. God bless.